Hello, and welcome to a short presentation on the eight principles for strengthening public sector social and behavior change capacity. This session is meant to set the scene for and offer some background to our Springboard webinar on the same topic. For a detailed version of what is presented here, you can read the briefer on this topic. The link will be shared in the webinar chat. First, we want to be on the same page about who we're referring to when we say public sector. In this presentation, the public sector refers to the government, specifically those units primarily responsible for social and behavior change or SBC in a country. This typically includes the health promotion and or the health education units of the Ministry of Health, but may vary from country to country. Capacity strengthening is a dynamic, non-linear process that requires time, patience, flexibility, and strong relationships with many actors. It is often thought of as trainings, mentoring, or coaching, but it's really much more than that. It can also extend beyond in-person interactions to include virtual components like remote mentoring, coaching, or trainings, and access digital resources and tools. Instead of a one-off, one-size-fits-all training, successful capacity strengthening initiatives provide opportunities not just for SBC technical knowledge, but also applied learning and skills transfer based on in-depth understanding of the beneficiaries, including their needs and goals. This is a model of the SBC ecosystem. It's a systematic assessment, design, and implementation of customized and strategic capacity strengthening for SBC. It's, it highlights inherently interconnected relationships at three levels, individual, organizational, and system, with different goals for each different level. At an individual level, the capacity of individuals is built through blended learning approaches. Organizationally, programmatic, institutional, and financial domains of SBC organizations can be built. At a systems level, connections and coordination of structures among individuals and organizations to create a supportive environment for effective SBC. Interventions addressing all three levels of the ecosystem strengthen capacity and competencies to support effective SBC efforts and ultimately can affect health and social outcomes in a positive way. The public sector operates in all three domains of the SBC ecosystem. It comprises of individuals who lead and manage SBC programs and coordinate efforts of other SBC specialists in the country. These individuals are often seated within the Health Promotion Unit at the Ministry of Health, which has the ability to prioritize SBC and institutionalize processes. These units function within a larger health system made up of various actors, which has the ability to set priorities and standards at the national level. So what is the purpose of this interview overview and discussion? To help donors, implementing agencies, and in-country partners who are keen to work on strengthening the capacity of the public sector so SBC programs are more purposeful, effective, and sustainable. We want to highlight key principles, strategies, considerations, and operational research questions from experiences that were collected and synthesized from various stakeholders from current or past USAID-funded programs, including BKMI, Breakthrough Action, C4H, C-Change, CSH, HC3, PSI, and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Bangladesh. Eight key principles were developed as part of this synthesis, and we will briefly go over them in this presentation. Some country examples have also been highlighted where possible to illustrate some of these principles. The first principle is nurturing key relationships with stakeholders in the public sector. Through building strong relationships and visibility with them, and this includes senior leaders, directors, and SBC specialists, and by communicating frequently, openly, and honestly with them. Setting clear and feasible expectations in line with the pace at which the public sector functions, including agreed upon roles, responsibilities, and timelines for transition of technical and financial responsibilities. Demonstrating confidence and building trust in SBC specialists through transparency, co-creation, mentorship, patience, persistence, 
working hand in hand and jointly presenting at internal and external meetings and, and not imp- assuming the role, um, their role and independently leading SBC activities. The second principle is aligning public sector capacity strengthening efforts with public sector goals, structures, and processes, not creating something parallel. So this helps the public sector seamlessly integrate SBC into its work, minimizing disruptions to workflow and enhancing the likelihood of adoption and utilization. Begin capacity strengthening efforts by asking how implementers can support public sector goals. There will be a greater level of ownership then, and this can be done by linking SBC efforts to existing public sector objectives and interests, such as demonstrating positive impacts on health outcomes, providing opportunities to manage competitive grants, and strengthening recognition as the national coordinating body for SBC. Advocating for SBC public sector funding as well by demonstrating how SBC interventions can improve health outcomes how they are cost effective, and how they can generate a positive return on investment. Creating an understanding of both what SBC indicators are and how they are different from and can contribute to program indicators, as well as advocating for and supporting the inclusion of SBC indicators into the national monitoring systems. Here is an example of how capacity was strengthened in the municipal Um, sector in Nepal. Shifts in the Nepal government to decentralized system recently granted SBC decision-making and implementation to the local authorities for the first time. USAID-funded Breakthrough Action did this by improving local knowledge regarding SBC. They worked together with the government of Nepal and then NHIECC to demonstrate how to use local evidence to inform SBC strategies urging them to incorporate SBC activities into municipal planning processes and allocation of funds for SBC. Using local evidence to identify key health issues, identifying target populations for planned SBC activities, involving municipal officials in SBC activities. This created stronger and more sustainable capacity at the local level. The next principle, number three, is maximizing the unique strengths and comparative advantage of the public sector. The public sector has the unique capacity to implement and advocate for the system's level change, given it makes up an essential part of the health system, serving as both the gatekeeper and national authority on health issues. The public sector often dictates what human and financial resources, if any, will support SBC efforts. We can achieve this by advocating for health promotion unit and providing support to institutionalize and integrate SBT international programs. We can focus on capacity strengthening efforts on the unique ability of the public sector to establish and maintain quality SBC initiatives and programs. And also by highlighting the role of the public sector as the national convener and expert by supporting them to fully utilize and leverage their national and sub-national networks to strengthen collaboration and scale up successful interventions. The fourth principle is to elevate the status of public sector SBC specialists. In a field of medical doctors and public health epidemiologists, SBC and health promotion professionals offer lack status and may not be taken seriously. Furthermore, the role of SBC is not always clearly defined. When, which can lead to not being taken seriously, but also lead to confusion and disregard. Elevating the status of SBC professionals, increasing their visibility, and providing opportunities for them to further their careers can improve the quality of SBC. Some ways to do this can include involving the public sector SBC specialists as much as possible, including inviting them to present at and lead meetings, giving them ownership and credit for their contributions, creating clear job descriptions and outlining their SBC role, developing and institutionalizing academic and certificate programs, pre-service and in-service, ensuring opportunities for SBC professionals right out of school and providing and linking them to financial opportunities, internships, fellowships, etc., 
connecting SPC professionals to one another through routine knowledge exchange events, even like this Springboard Forum, and sharing lessons learned, effective practices, and challenges, providing support and mentorship for trainings implemented by the public sector. A couple of examples. In South Africa, an assessment conducted by Seoul City in 2009 found that most practitioners responsible for SBC in Africa did not have, the same, have relevant training. In order to address this, the USAID-funded Sea Change Project and partners established a center of excellence at Witwatersrand University in South Africa. The center provided and the first accredited graduate-level SBCC program in Africa to strengthen regional competencies and capacity to design and implement high-quality SBC interventions. Sea Change and Partners established three additional SBC centers of excellence at universities in Albania, Guatemala, and Nigeria. Each center established a program that best fits the needs of students and professionals they served. In Egypt, a three-year project implemented by the USAID-funded HC3 project in Egypt, um, led by the Johns Hopkins Center for Communication Programs, sought to strengthen the capacity of the Ministry of Health and Population to lead and coordinate SBC efforts throughout the country. The project aimed to strengthen the capacity of health educators who primarily were responsible for health promotion at the facility and community levels. Before the program, health, pro health, health education was not a recognized profession. Health educators received no pre-service training or no formal job descriptions for health educators even existed, and there was no clear path for career advancement in this field. HC3 and the Ministry of Health and Population worked together to elevate the status of health educators, creating a two-year certificate program for health education and piloting a pre-service training curriculum for health educators. The project also developed a formal job description for health educators and provided them with a reference manual containing key information and messages on a range of health topics. This type of system level change supported sustained progress of SBC capacity among Egypt's health educators. The fifth principle is focusing on public sector capacity strengthening efforts on management coordination and collaboration. The public sector has the reach, scale, authority, and mandate to coordinate SBC activities. Given this authority, it fills a unique and essential role that implementers should aim to feel. The public sector is often best positioned to coordinate and lead rather than implement, and SBC efforts throughout the country can be supported by strengthening capacity and leadership, management, knowledge, and technical skills so that public sector staff have the capacity to identify, approve, and advocate for quality SBC. If outsourcing, strengthening the capacity of the public sector to manage contracts and partnerships, with ad agencies and production houses, and to understand how and when to outsource support. Providing tools to support contracting, including requests for proposal templates, scoring sheets, and guides for selecting the best proposal. Advocating for public sector to have the autonomy to manage government funding, including procurement selection, and ensuring all staff are oriented on ministry's procurement procedures. In Zambia, the strengthening health communication capacity and coordination was an interesting effort that happened between 2010 and 2014 by USAID-supported CSH project. This was to strengthen and sustain national health communication activities through a technical assistance program to the government of Zambia. And the project focused on capacity strengthening efforts of several ministries and government to enable them to develop, implement, and evaluate health communication activities. Activities included the development and implementation of a hands-on formative research training on social and behavior change and development of private sector engagement strategy. Additionally, CSH revitalized dormant technical working groups, established to assess campaigns against standard guidelines and collaborated with learning institutions to strengthen the SBC curricula. An end-line evaluation showed that capacity for managing SBC activities increased in all three ministries, and additionally, at the end-line, 100% of the SBC campaigns were informed by evidence developed according to standard guidelines and monitored as compared to 63% at the baseline. 
The sixth principle is supporting technical and organizational capacity simultaneously. Increasing knowledge and competencies in SBC won't translate to behavior or organizational change if SBCs as specialists are not able to structurally put into practice what they learn. To help them do this, we have to focus initial organizational capacity strengthening efforts on readiness, including workforce development, and ensuring SBC specialists have the necessary management systems in place. Introducing and supporting the institutionalization of processes and tools to facilitate high quality technical and organizational capacity building. Determining how to work with the public sector, whether through co-locating in the same office, seconding a staff member to a project, or providing remote support, and creating and implementing specific scopes of work, roles, responsibilities, and timelines. Supporting the public sector in creating and implementing a resource mobilization strategy for financial sustainability, including seeking funds through grants, donations, fundraising activities, and private support. The seventh principle is strengthening and supporting SBC systems in which public sector plays a role. The goal of capacity strengthening activities should be to develop a supportive SBC system of which the public sector is one part. Public sector capacity strengthening should be placed in the context of all the capacities needed in the national system, where each part plays a distinct role. This includes developing systems to ensure information and capacity flows from public sector leadership to those implementing local health promotion efforts. There are at least nine overarching components that make up an effective SBC system coordination, strategic direction, harmonized messages, breadth of competencies, sustained professional development, recognized profession, funding, networking, and knowledge management. Some ideas to support these components can include implementing technical working groups, websites, knowledge exchange events, or formal and informal communication channels such as email and WhatsApp to support information exchange at various levels. Collaborating with the public sector to develop clear coordination structures and practices to support efficiency, collaboration, integration, and quality SBC initiatives, including the creation of technical working groups, content design teams to review and approve SBC materials, message harmonization processes, and monitoring systems. Creating and maintaining a database of private sector partners, such as agencies, production houses, creative consultants, and including these partners in SBC capacity strengthening activities to improve relationships with them. Connecting the public sector with private sector partners able to produce high quality SBC materials. Tailored capacity strengthening led to improved SBC competencies in Ghana. The USAID-funded C4H project strengthened the SBC technical and organizational capacity of the National, Regional, and District Health Promotion Division of the Ghana Health Services. Capacity strengthening programs were guided by the principles of learning by doing and learning by leading. C4H co-located with the National Health HPD to collaboratively design, implement, and monitor SBC initiatives and strengthen department structures and processes. The program consisted of three foundational capacity strengthening programs for HPD staff. A one-week cohort-based change agent development program provided the foundations of SBC, including theory, community mobilization, working with the media, use of mobile technology, leadership skills, etc and the six-month cohort-based Set for Change program strengthened the SBC skills and organizational professional confidence of newly trained district health promotion officers. The challenge, Change Challenge Fund provided CADP and SFC participants the opportunity to apply for funding to design and implement small-scale SBC activities. And the C4H and partners also provided on-site internships for HPD staff to practice and strengthen their SBC technical skills. Over a five-year period, the C4H pro program strengthened five major SBC competencies by 26% among HBD staff from baseline to endline. The eighth and last principle is building in sustainability structures. 
fully transitioning part of a project or a set of activities to a public sector requires time and strategic thinking. Ideally, transitions occur when public sector is able to demonstrate strong SBC organizational competencies and the project is ready. However, more often than not, project timelines end up dictating the timing of essential transitions. So how we can help this is by positioning public sector SBC specialists in integral roles throughout the lifespan of SBC initiatives. So they have the knowledge, confidence, and capacity to coordinate activities, ensuring and advocating for sufficient budget for the public sector. Using key documents developed collaboratively, such as the SBC strategy and action plans as roadmaps for transition and ensuring the public sector has partnerships in place with other NGOs and private sector for provide, providing sustained support. In Nepal, distributive, distributive capacity strengthening led to smart family planning choices. Distributive capacity strengthening strengthens the capacity of a critical mass of people, supports the integration of SBC at all three levels of the SBC ecosystem, and develops, it creates a strong, interactive, and resilient network of SBC specialists at all levels of the health system, actively making a difference in the lives of young families, helping them make smart family planning choices. The 8C3 Nepal project worked alongside the national SBC professionals to strengthen the capacity of the Ministry of Health and its partners, and to improve their reproductive health and family planning outcomes. At an individual level, the project implemented capacity strengthening efforts among peer facilitators to share essential family planning information with newly married couples. At the organizational level, the project strengthens family planning counseling services and health facilities throughout capacity strengthening and providing su supportive supervision among providers. At the systems level, the project worked with district health officers to integrate family planning information and referrals within the immunization services and with the National Health Education Information Communication Center and Family Plan Health Division to successfully conceptualize, plan, promote, and implement a national campaign with a localized impact. In addition to the eight principles, there are some important considerations we need to take into account. High turnover of staff, limited funding allocated to SBC, oftentimes complex bureaucratic systems, low levels of motivation among SBC professionals and staff, and sometimes health issues tend to be politicized. These are um, prevalent in many countries and cannot be avoided, but need to be confronted and, and addressed within the context of programs when considering capacity strengthening. So in conclusion, the public sector SBC capacity strengthening interventions that address all levels of SBC ecosystem contribute to strengthened capacities and competencies in turn support effective SBC and ultimately positively affect health and social outcomes. The public sector fills a unique and essential role that implementers should not aim to fill. Despite the challenges, Strengthening public sector SBC capacity can improve the health and well-being of communities. Therefore, implementers should document and publish their experiences and additional principles for success. This will aid the continuation of efforts and strengthen global SBC capacity strengthening.